Hello and welcome to Nikon Report, your weekly roundup of all the latest Nikon news and all other photographic announcements that we found interesting. It's Constant here and here is Becky. All right. Special announcement. Da, 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 da. 800 mil is officially out. It is official. The 800 millimeter f6.3 VRS lens in the Z lineup has been announced today. The best kept secret. <laughs> Obviously, we knew that it was on its way and we were expecting it at some point soon, but we didn't have an exact date. So as of the 6th of April, it is now released into the world. Shall we talk about the specs? Absolutely. Yeah, no one's seen it before. Whatever you saw the internet was fake, obviously. <laughs> so finally, we have the official specs. What do we have, Becky? I think the important bit in the whole announcement is, yes, it's 800 mil. The weight and the size, I think, is the most important thing for a lot of people. So the official weight is 2.4 kilograms or 2,385 grams. That's because it's a PF lens. Exactly. So it incorporates the phase Fresnel technology that we've seen previously in the F-mount lenses 300 F4E and 500 F5.6E. Those were both PF lenses. Very, very successful lenses, I might add. So it's interesting that Nikon have decided to go rather than smaller and build their way up. They've gone right for the longest focal length that they normally produce and maybe they'll work their way down. Yeah, absolutely right. And then you've got 800 mil and you can also add teleconverse. So it's officially compatible with both 1.4 and 2 times silicon converters. So you can push it to 1600 millimeters if you want to. And then, yeah, we try to work our way down. So we now have 400 mil, we have 100 to 400, and obviously 1700 lenses. So it seems like 600 or 500 mil would be the next in line. Yes. I mean, we also had on the roadmap a smaller 400 mil at some point. So we were expecting that to be a PF lens. Whether or not that will happen anytime soon, I have no idea. But uh, let's just talk about the the sort of the nitty gritty specs. So we've got 22 elements in 14 groups, of which three are ED, one is SR, one is PF, mm -hmm. and then it's also got its nano crystal coat and fluorine coat, so it'll be nice and easy to clean as well. I'm sure a lot of photographers are salivating right now just reading about how <laughs> many ED elements are inside this lens. Some people care about these things. Uh, let's talk about the VR. So it's 5.5 stop VR for cameras that have synchro VR capability. So essentially your mirrorless Z, but I mean, which ones except for the DX bodies, the rest of them all have synchro VR, I would assume. Mm -hmm. So you'll get your 5.5 stop VR, which will be very, very handy. Um, it's also got a suppressed focus breathing which means that it could work quite nicely for video. Yeah, absolutely. If you're a videographer and you dreamt of 800 mil focal distance for video work, that is the lens for you. I'm actually excited when we're going to review the lens ourselves. The first shot, the opening shot, is going to be us in the field, shot on 800 mil, yeah. walking with our wireless mics, and talking to the lens. Okay, you've got it all pictured out already. Exactly. It's amazing. And obviously, just following Matt Irvin, we will be testing it specifically for portrait, not sports and wildlife because that's what we do. <laughs> I think it's already been done. We need to do something different. All right. So what, what else can we do then? The portraits are out of way. Obviously, who does sports and wildlife? No one does that. We should do what landscape with the yeah. 800. Yeah. Maybe some macro shots. Yeah, maybe some macro. That's what I do with all my lenses. But 800 mil is the best macro lens. Mm -hmm. So another interesting factor is that the center of gravity is much closer to the body, which means that you don't get this peculiar sort of top heaviness that we tend to get with longer lenses on the F mount. That's really, really good, actually, because it just means that the whole setup is going to be a bit more stable. Yeah. And we'll put less pressure on the mount as well. Yeah. One of the common repairs we will see with F bodies is actually deformed F mount. And it could be just a half a degree, but then obviously when they plug into diagnostic machines, it will come out as a fault. Now, they've done it before as well with 100 to 400 lens. They put the center of the gravity in the middle of the lens and not into the front as well. Mm -hmm. And that should help a lot of photographers just focusing. So it seems like it's a common pattern there. As well as you say, focus briefing for videographers. It's something that you can look into. Well, we don't have a proper cameras designed for videography. Technically, they're hybrid, and Z9 is probably the best hybrid camera right now. We can see that a lot of lenses are designed with a minimum focus breathing specifically for videographers. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, we also have a five meter close focusing distance, which is, I think, pretty decent for an 800 mil lens. So That's true. You never know that macro could actually come about. Absolutely. Well, one test we're going to do is if you can fill the frame with my head. My head is big, so it should be working. But okay, uh, until we try it out, we will never know. 
It's also fully weather sealed, which means that it's got all of those rubber gaskets in place to uh, protect against dust and moisture. The filter size is actually a 46 millimeter internal filter, not a front filter. It's so. a sleeping filter. Mm -hmm. And it comes with a few accessories. It mm -hmm. comes with the slip on lens cover with a, a very large HB 104 lens hood, which is one of those, you know, mm -hmm. we've seen them on all the all the long lenses. It comes obviously with its caps, but it also comes with the same case that the 400 mil comes with the CLL three. So it's like a a kind of backpack yeah. almost. For some of you who haven't tried long Z lenses, think about something like 200 to 400 F mount lens. That had version of CLL two case, which looks very very similar to CLL three. Yeah, and also the lens will come with its own strap. Have you ever used strap on the lenses? No, never. Me neither, but I, thank I, you for including. <laughs> it's just an extra thing to remember when you're when you're packing up the lens. You're like, oh, where's the lens strap? So let's let's talk about we've talked about the specs a little bit. Obviously, yeah. we haven't seen the lens, but we're gonna talk about some people who have very shortly. But let's just have a little chat about the price. Okay, so the price is in UK is six two nine nine. Which in Euros or in Europe is going to be 6899. Yeah, so obviously those prices include the local VAT. In UK it's 20%, in Europe it could be anything up to 23% of VAT. So, and in the United States, it's supposed to be 5999 plus the local tax. If it's higher than that, we won't know until it, the video comes out tomorrow. But I'm sure you'll let us know in the comments below. Now, I personally think that the price is all right. So... Looking at the price of 500p at 5.6 F-mount lens, it's 3699. Yep. Now, this one is 6299. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we have a gap between the release of those lenses, first yes. of all. So it's been a while, so we had inflation in between. You also have a longer and a bigger and heavier lens, so it's got more elements in it. It's also physically bigger as well. And looking at the price, let's say, of 800 5.6 F-mount lens, which is whopping 19,000 pounds, 6299 doesn't sound so bad. Now, comparing the size between the two lenses, so 500 PF weighs 1,460 grams, so 1 1.5 kilos. Yeah, this one is heavy, it's 2.4 kilos. Right. And the size-wise, well, 500 PF is 106 millimeter by 237. The 800 mil is bigger, it's 140 by 385. So it's a bigger lens, it's a heavier lens. It's got more elements in it, and it's also obviously a longer focal distance. So we can't really compare price, no. prices, you know, that one is cheaper and another one is not. Generally, longer lenses tend to be more expensive. But if you're looking at the price compared to the F-mount version, and also compared to the Canon mirrorless option as well, which is 5.6, not 6.3, let's be honest, but it is significantly cheaper. I think with this release, this lens can be tried by a lot more photographers compared to the F-mount version. Yeah, I do think this lens makes the 800 millimeter focal length much more accessible and even the longer focal lengths because, okay, so with the 1.4 teleconverter, the TC 1.4 mm -hmm. Z, it becomes 1120 millimeters. With the two times, as you said, it becomes 1600 millimeters, but these are focal lengths that before even sort of a few years ago would have been completely beyond one's imagination yeah and basically if you know you could buy a brand new car for that amount of money or you could put the deposit towards your house as well yeah and most photographers weren't looking at shooting that long but now i've noticed in in recent times people are saying oh but i need something longer i need something longer and you go well the only option is this you know nearly 20 grand yeah. 800 mil lens or you know put a teleconverter on a lens which is still going to be 10 grand or thereabouts so it's an interesting release i'm quite glad that they've picked something that isn't already clearly mirrored in the f mount lineup you know, they haven't gone, oh, well, we've got a PF version of this in the F mount. Let's just make a Z version of it. It's actually, it's a whole new design. It's been obviously quite deeply considered by Nikon. So I think that's quite impressive. Absolutely. I mean, let's be honest. I mean, 6299 is a lot of money for a lot of people, especially if you bought Z9 recently. But just looking at the, let's say, even rental costs of hiring F mount 800 mil, it's probably would cost a lot even to rent it. So yeah. again, this lens will go to a lot of photographers who can afford it. This also will go a lot into more uh, rental houses as well and feel a bit cheaper to rent as well. So it's good to have this option. The going with the face Fresno design, I think, makes sense because obviously we want to have lighter lenses. Those lenses tend to become big and heavy. So I think it's overall a nice decision from Nikon. Good. So let's talk about impressions, first-hand looks from people. We have noticed that there have been a lot of photographers 
professional photographers in the US who have already gotten their hands on one. We've also uh, had the lovely Matt Irwin get in touch with us because he did his first impressions video. And as you've mentioned, Con has done a lot of portrait photography with it. But he's he got in touch with us. We said, could you give us just a first impression statement? And uh, he said, what is beguiling about this lens is it is... Hold on, Becky. You should read it with Australian accent. I can't let's, do let's start that. with that. No, no, you should. So what is beguiling is... Exactly. about this lens? All right, here we go. Here we go. So now <laughs> Becky reads impression of Matt Irvin with Australian accent. And then I'll do New York accent of Seth. I just, I can't because it's going to... Matt, we'll never get in touch with us. Ever I, again. No, I can't. My Australian accent's not very good, to be honest. I can do a lot of accents, but Australian well, is one that I really... It's probably better than my Eastern European Australian accent. No? <laughs> probably. You know what's funny is when I was in the US, most people said, oh, are you from Australia? Because they automatically assume yeah. you are because, I don't know, because your vowels are a bit flatter than in America, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah, imagine Rebel Wilson and just try to talk like her. No, I <laughs> can't. Okay, can I just read it normally? <laughs> what is beguiling about this lens is it is so much power in such a small package. How was that? That was beautiful. Okay, great. That was beautiful. That was terrible. Uh, he says, in all seriousness, he says, it is light and fast and works with the TCs. If you want to know what the Z future looks like with the Z9 400 and now the 800 PF, the future is here now. I don't need one, but I want one. Here you have it. You can see Matt Irvin's hands-on wheel lens on his YouTube channel. It's called Nikon 800 PFVR S8K. First look, far more than you think. It's out already. He may publish another video when the lens is officially announced. So do tune in to his channel. Now we have Seth from New York. And he also had hands-on uh, with the lens. He will have a video out on his channel as well. We will put the link below as well. Here's what he has to say. And now we have Becky with a New York accent. <laughs> no, not doing that. <laughs> I can't do New York. That's one of the accents I'm very not good at. Well, try to be like, you know, think about Sopranos. Have you watched Sopranos? No. I mean, it's a New Jersey accent, but it's very similar to New York. And that's where just the comment section goes to melt down. I can't do it. I can't even think what a New York accent sounds like. Seth says, it's probably the best value super telephoto out there that's designed to be so much easier to carry. Sharp, clean, handles shake well, and I personally found no flare issues and I wasn't even sporting the lens hood. Here you have it. So a lot of folks in Australia and the United States already had the lens in their hands not us. We were actually under NDA. That's right. However, the lovely Tom Mason, who is a Nikon ambassador in the UK, has had an exclusive first look of it. So at least one UK person has had it. Well, not right now. No, He's in Antarctica. So I think he came from Nikon Europe. He's out shooting in the wilds of cold places. But he has had a first look. So we're going to include the link for his first impressions video. Yeah, we also had Steve Perry, who had the sneak peek as well on the lens. And the last but not least, Rishi as well. So his video should be out as well. I asked him how he feels about this lens and all he said to me, it's all right. It's all right. So he's obviously keeping his opinions completely reserved for his own review video and not giving us any sneak peek of his thoughts. But that's fine. We're going to include a link. If his video has gone out by the time ours is done, then we will put a link in the description box for him too. Fantastic. So to wrap this up, the discussion about 800 mil lens. What are your thoughts? Is this a positive release? Are you happy with it? I am very happy with it. It's obviously it's not a lens that I'm going to rush out to buy because no, I don't have a spare six I think and it's a half grand. Walk about lens. Mm -hmm. But uh, I really am keen to get my hands on it to see what it how it performs in the field, and I think it's going to be good for a lot of people who are now just now after two years of not really being able to travel are looking at going on safari or doing wildlife trips and stuff like that. And it's like, okay, what lens could I get that might just cover those really long distance shots? When we went to the London Wetland Center a couple of months back, we shot with the 100-400, didn't and we? And it was still short for a lot of things. Yeah, even with the 1.4 converter, we were struggling a little bit with the focal length. So the 800 mil with or without teleconverters would have been ideal for that situation because there's a lot of spots there where you can't get very close, understandably, to the birds. It's same with wildlife. You're not necessarily, unless you're in a zoo or safari park, you're not going to get close up to them. So an 800 mil is probably the right, right tool for that job. Absolutely. And now we have a range from 14 millimeter 
going all the way up to 800 millimeter. There's still spots that are missing. Hopefully, Prime Lens will address it, something like H5 1.2, which is hopefully will be the development will be announced soon. I personally think that it may be announced tomorrow. We just don't know about it because something they tell us about, mm. then they don't talk about other products as well. So True. who knows? Maybe they'll announce this one. Of course, tilt and shift lenses will be the next step as well. And we need something like five or 600 mil lenses. But overall, I think the system is becoming definitely more complete than it was before. Absolutely. Just got to include it there. Just got to throw it in. Yes. At least once. Fantastic. So next one up, speaking of long lenses, so let's talk about 400 millimeter lenses. First one up, we have an update. Apparently it started to ship in the United States. Uh, there are reports from users who ordered the lens on uh, day one. It was announced on 18th of January that they started to get the shipping notifications from the US dealers. Now, unfortunately, we can't say the same for UK. And Europe. We still expecting them to arrive by the end of the month. So fingers crossed, if we have any more updates on this, we'll let you know. And now we have a little bit more hands-on with the lens as well. Morten Himmler, who is an amazing wildlife photographer, he published not one video, he published about five or six videos of him shooting with Z9 400mm lenses in Scotland. And he also have Richie in all five of those videos. So if you wondered where Richie is and what he's up to, do definitely check out those videos. It could be your weekend read and watch. It could be a nice evening out with a glass of whiskey. We should have a segment called Richie Watch. Yes. <laughs> Richie yes. Watch. Like, where is Richie this week? Now for some Z9 coverage for you. Okay, so in the UK, we don't have much positive news. We are getting slow and small batches, about one per month at the moment. One camera a month or one batch a month? No, both. Okay. <laughs> so, so please be patient if you're in the UK. You are doing a brilliant and admirable job of keeping calm and carrying on. In the USA, Adorama is now shipping the Z9 for orders placed on November 1st. That's basically day three. Mm -hmm. So the camera is announced on the 28th. That's October. true. And BNH is still on day one. So they're still shipping the cameras that were ordered on 28th of October. Now, I guess BNH is a bigger dealer in the United States. I'm not sure what the size of the dealers are, but uh, I guess they have maybe more pre-orders as well. But for those of you who are in UK and Europe, you should get a medal. Mm -hmm. In patience. Say, I've been there through and through waiting for my Z9. Yeah. Okay, so more Z9 news. The Z9 receives best of the best Red Dot Product Award 2022. Simply the best. Better than all the rest. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> we also have... The ZFC, the 105 2.8 VR Macro, the 400 2.8 TCVR, and Eclipse Sight the Upright Microscope also received Red Dot Awards for 2022 for product design. Fantastic. And then we also have, for some of you who use Sony PlayStation cameras, if you want to know the difference between Z9 and Sony A1, Matt Irvin, he had a video where he says, why should you choose Z9? over A1. He has both. He had experience with both. If you want to know what he thinks, definitely check this video out. Okay, let's move on to some third party news. We have a really exciting announcement for you. So the Voigtlander Z-mount 35mm f1.2 lens is coming out on Wednesday 6th of April and we gonna stock it. That's right. We will actually be stocking the Z-Line Voigtlander lenses for special order. We're gonna try and keep, when the rest of them sort of roll out, we will try and keep one or two in stock, but we are gonna test out the 35 1.2 on the ZFC and the Z50 as soon as it arrives and let you know our thoughts. If you're interested in purchasing one, let us know. Let's talk about the reason why we came to that. One of the reasons why we decided to stock white light lenses, actually, we've been trying to test those lenses. I have 35 1.4 Voigtlander lens for Leica, which I'm using on Z6 mm. via adapter. So, and I've been really impressed. So for this kind of classical lenses, for this classical rendering, which we talk a lot about because a lot of people say, well, I just don't like the modern look anymore. A lot of people are trying to degrade the images by using either colored filters or soft filters, et cetera, et cetera, you name it. So having those classical lenses is very interesting. Now, Voigtlander releasing the lenses for that map. So we've decided to concentrate on that because obviously those lenses are a lot smaller. So compare even to Nikra S lenses, uh, the 51.8 or 24 1.8 is quite, quite large as well. So in terms of if you want to have something small and light, 
And of course, you don't mind manual focus because that's kind of the main thing that is not going for them. But they also get cheaper as well. So I think it can be an interesting lens. And obviously, Cassina, Voigtlander, quite well-known brands. Obviously, Cassina is making some Zeiss lines as well. Voigtlander lenses are very popular among like enthusiasts as well. So I think it's going to be a nice addition to new users. I suppose the other thing is that because you say a lot of people are looking to degrade the image, I think there's two different classes of photographer now almost. You have people who want the sharpest thing possible, particularly if they're doing something like wildlife, like or commercial work, or they're shooting for, say, the National Geographic or yep. something like that. But the commercial photographers who want the sharpest image possible. Then you have commercial photographers and professional photographers who want a very specific aesthetic to their images. And that can be achieved through post-processing, through, you know, whatever, picture controls yeah. or something. But actually having a lens that produces a particular look and is almost kind of feels unique to their style. That's true. Is what we're all sort of going for. We want something that is uniquely us. Absolutely. We're all trying to have our own style and have our own look to the images as well. But one of the trends that I see right now as well, a lot of digital photographers trying to get that film look. And that's been, mm. that's been around for quite some time. What we also see is a reverse trend where film photographers are using a modern lens on their cameras. Yes. On film, and that looks very strange because, yeah, you can put, let's say, 24-70, 2.8G lens on F100 or F6 and shoot with it. And it does look clinical, but on film as well. Mm. So, And also we have people buying a very expensive cameras, 45 megapixel high resolution, putting the node lens on them just to get that look they like. So Voigtland gives you that option. You can look into the Nikon F mount glass. We have a bunch of AI, AIS lenses, but you want to have the chips in the lens so your exif data stays on your camera's camera knows what lens you use and your meter works the same way. Those are a nice modern version of an older glass to try out. And they are not very expensive, which is also a good thing. Yeah, I think that as photographers, we're infinitely curious and enjoy experimenting with different styles and looks. So this is just another way to do it. We're very excited to be stocking these, even if it's a small line at the moment on the Z mount line up and we've obviously got this lens the 35 1.2 is our starter lens and then there's going to be a few more uh, later on down the line that we talked about last week on the Nikon report but they also do a series of f mount lenses so if you are looking for those we can get those on special order there's no problems there uh, we're happy to stock them for you that's true in the f mount glass they have 28 mil 2.8 40 mil 2.8 58 1.4 and then 90 mil lenses as well. So it's a kind of their portrait lens. With the upcoming lenses, they will have 50 f2 and 35 f2 APO lenses, their top line apochromatic lenses. And those have 23 f1.2, which I think is a DX lens, and it will be equivalent of 35 mil on your DX body. Mm. I think with all the things that we've stocked, whether it's Voigtlander or like the Sigma lenses, for example, we're trying to almost curate a selection that complements the Nikon lineup as well. It's not like we're trying to find things that directly compete with exactly. Nikon glass because nothing can compete with Nikon glass. It's not like they're all, you know, made in the same factory or anything. It's everyone has their unique signature of how they produce their lenses. So what we've got now is a, a really nice selection of stuff that if someone goes, well, this is my price point or this is the look that I'm going for, we have something to suit every kind of photographer. So the choice is yours. The options are there. Very good. All right. And now we have an update on Venus Optical Hour 20mm f4 shift lens that we talked about last week. So it has been officially announced. So we have a few more bits of information. So first of all, we have 14 blades aperture. We've got plus 11 millimeter shift mount. They say it's outstanding optical performance. The samples I saw look a little bit soft to me, but I could be wrong on this one. It's got 82 millimeter thread. Now, the important bit is it's $1,299. The F mount lens and Z mount lens look identical. It looks like just Z mount lens has an extension attached to it. Right. So let's say Laova's version of FTZ. Yeah. Um, so it's not exactly optimized for Z mount lens. It's existing design that they use, but it's nice to have a shift lens designed natively. Well, natively for Z mount, I would still probably personally go for 24 PCE lens, which is a proper Nikon lens for F mount. Yeah. And in terms of price point, I mean, a secondhand 24 PCE is going to be in the secondhand market, probably a similar price point. Absolutely. And another thing that I want to add, which is not in the report, but Laova lenses are coming to official distribution in the UK as well. So now you don't need to get them from China. You probably can get from your local dealer. Now, speaking of the 24 tilt shift lens, Laova also has a special lens support adapter, which is separate purchase. It costs $249. So if you're planning to use those lenses, this adapter could be an option as well. That's smart, actually. 
Yeah, very interesting. And I wonder if you can attach it to other lens as well. But so far, they list it as supported with this lens specifically. With the 82 millimeter diameter. Absolutely. Mm, okay. All right, let's move on to some software updates. We had update for DaVinci Resolve Movie Editor. It's now at version 17.4.6. The importance of this update, it's now supports the decoding of Nikon RAW files. What that tell us? That potentially the RAW video support on Z9, the firmware update, is coming very soon. I personally think that April is going to be interesting on the announcement. So we got 800 mil. We hopefully will get Z9 update with AK 60 frames per second and RAW support etc etc we hopefully will get update finally on z62 and z72 according to a lot of people in the industry it seems like it is happening in april again nothing confirmed yet but we are hearing it and apparently there's going to be not just auto focus improvement but also evf improvements and that's where the second process will come to place but it sounds to me that we're going to have very fruitful months for nikon next one up wooden nikon f camera replica model is now back in stock on ebay and etsy finally some nikon cameras are back in stock even if it's the wooden version. Uh, on Etsy, they sell for about £150 plus postage. £150! It's a beautifully crafted piece of uh, equipment, though. Obviously, it's not a real camera, but if you want a one-of-a-kind wooden Nikon F camera for your display case at home, because we've all got those, Yeah. Uh, then do check this out. We'll put the link in the description box. Don't all snap them up at once. I would like to try and get one for the shop. Absolutely. The next one up, a Pampier Maché version of Z9 is now available for order for £5,500. It took me a whole week to make one. Would you buy a broken Nikon Air for £150 to put on your shelf, or would you buy a wooden version of Nikon Air? The, the wooden one's cool. It's a little bit different. Having a broken Nikon F, it's like, oh, nice camera. Like, yeah, it doesn't work. It's not It's not the same. No, it's like, like, yeah, I have it. I've been shooting it all my life. Yes, you could say that, except yeah. it came out like 20, more than 20 years before you were born. <laughs> I've been shooting with it since it was brand new. Exactly. Another item that's back in stock that isn't a Nikon camera is the Nikon F Trilogy by Uli Koch. This is actually a set of three books. They sold out pretty quickly as soon as we got them in. So we have some sets now. They're live on the website. If you were waiting for them, uh, now is your chance. All right, let's move on to review sections. We have one review for you. So we have a petapixel review in a Z2875 2.8 lens and they call it an affordable alternative to 2470 f2.8. Yes, they say that while the 28 to 75 may not have the S label, it still delivers impressively sharp images at all ranges and gives users a focal range angle of view of about 32 degrees at 28 millimeter. It still delivers impressively sharp images at all ranges. It does say that the vignetting is noticeable and the fall off in corners as well on both the wide and the zoom focal lengths. That's something that we noticed just having a look at it very quickly on the camera. But they do say that despite its flaws, given the price, it's hard to say that Nikon has done anything other than deliver a fantastic lens for Z mount shooters. I agree. I mean, vignetting is very noticeable. So if you are shooting center subject, it's probably not going to be an issue, especially wide open for portrait work. So again, it gives you that effect that you want. But if you for clinical sharpness and performance, there's no contender. 24 to 72 S lens is just the best 24 to 72 ever. I mean, it outperforms F mount versions by a long mile, and it's also better than the Z equivalent. For your weekend read and watch, we have the latest article in the Thousand and One Nights blog that's been published by Nikon. This one's quite an interesting one. This article talks about the Nikon GN Auto 45mm f2.8 lens and its creation. This is an incredibly unique lens. In fact, I think we may even have one in stock. Yeah, absolutely. I never thought that GN refers to guide number. It's obviously obvious, but you don't think about this abbreviation on the lens as you think about flash guns this way. Mm -hmm. But it was specifically designed to work with old flash guns. And it would be easier for you to calculate the guide number by moving the switch on the lens. So very interesting design. It's literally only one lens they had, didn't they? Yeah, that's right. They never did another one like it. Absolutely. The next one up is a little bit of a sad one. Patrick de Marchelier, the famous fashion photographer who photographed the likes of Princess Diana and many others, sadly passed away. We have the obituary. He had a very illustrious career and it's actually quite fascinating to see how much his work encompassed. So we've included that as your weekend read and watch. Absolutely. You've got to get an article from Guardian going through that. We also have a tribute from Fashion Channel on YouTube. We also have a video describing Patrick's photography in details from lighting to composition, etc. Et it's called What Makes This Photo Great Number 32. 
So do check them out. And uh, that's a wrap. Thanks for joining us today. Yes, thank you very much for watching and or listening. If you're watching on YouTube, please give us a like and a subscribe. We're going for 20,000 subscribers this year. We would love it if you would join the subscriber family. If you're listening on the podcast platforms, give us a follow, perhaps a review and a rating. All would be very much appreciated. Absolutely. We are everywhere on all podcast platforms. You name it. We're also on social medias like Instagram. You can find Becky at... No, I'm at Rebecca underscore Danese. And I'm at Konstantin Koshkin. But we will see you next week. Thank you very much. Bye. 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 <laughs> Bye. <laughs>